Girl, Everybody it's packed out here tonight. Follow mm -hmm. the one line, please. I told you. IDs out. I need to see IDs. Thank you, ladies. Welcome to Punk Ave. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Can you move? What? Excuse me. Uh-uh. Oh my God. We, you ready to go? Girl, I've been ready. Well, hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. I feel like you've been missing in action. Girl, I told you. I've been a hermit. Like, I have been just conserving my energy. I've been restoring my energy you should um you know it's just some of those things where i gotta go through this phase so so you're still in a wilderness currently i am i'm still in the wilderness okay um but you know i've learned how to spark a fire so you know i have a little campfire i've made uh a little hut <laughs> <laughs> so you're surviving I'm in the wilderness right you now. know as the last time we spoke you know i was just getting into the wilderness i didn't know what the hell you're was roaming going on. i was yeah. roaming around i didn't know what the hell was going on now i done pitched a tent i got my fire going so you can survive now in the wilderness. now i'm surviving in the wilderness okay. so you know i'm so, in my 40 days 40 nights okay so the process is still it's, the process is still in are effect. you fishing i'm and fishing eating well i'm, I'm eating well <laughs> Yeah, I'm eating well. Um, eating a lot of berries. Gotcha. A lot of plants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sounds but like a know, good time. It is you a good time. Know. Everyone needs to take a break. Don't I know? Yes, yes. Um, but, you know, again, so I don't have anything cool that I've been to. But I have cool things that I've watched. So on one particular night, I watched this uh documentary well actually i watched about 10 documentaries on the mm -hmm. food industry oof and i can't watch those girl when i say my mind is blown just because like i felt like damn all i can i can't drink bottled water you can't do I nothing can't, i can't drink I can't drink nothing. No. I can't eat nothing. You can't. But that's why I can't watch like <clears throat> What the Health. And it was like another one that I uh, saw on Netflix or like saw the title on Netflix. There's I can't, one called Rotten. Yeah, I can't. Health. I can't watch them because at the end of the day, there's another one about the ocean floor and it's all covered in plastic and it talks about how the fish eat the plastic and then they get. Then we get the fish, and then we eat the fish, yeah. and then we're we, eat we, the got, we got the plastic. Yes, yeah, so girl, I was just like, oh my god. Basically, they're telling you if you're not growing your own stuff, and when I mean growing, I mean in growing your it backyard. In season, yeah, not not growing it when it's out of season. I'm talking about in your backyard. And you're watering it from a river or something. Yeah, basically, you have to have a garden like Oprah. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking, but then that's not really po uh, possible right now because I'm in an apartment. <laughs> but, Can you please don't start a garden in your apartment complex? They will be pissed. A community garden. You should do a community garden. I should. You know, I am on the board of Neighborhood Are you so Are you really? I, I am. Oh my I am. god. The other night, a, a young couple across from me got into a fight, so I had to make sure that it was... It was all right. So I was peeking out the window. <laughs> You're that nigga. nigga. You're that neighbor. I'm that neighbor. I'm, You're Bernice Jenkins if, from if I color. Hear, if I hear anybody arguing, I'm my my head's out the door. You're Bernice. I need to hear that from me. No. I'm looking. I'm peeking. Shut I'm trying to. I'm going through the different. I'm going to from one room to the other room, Shut trying up. to see what I can hear. But anyways, but yes. So um, I would recommend you guys just. You know, take a look at your health, what you're eating. Pay attention. You know, I after I started watching all those documentaries, I went to HEB and I just bought vegetables. <laughs> hey, that would do it to you. And um, I I uh, broke down and I had a meat lover's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> was, I went to the extreme. I went, I went to the extreme. But I came back. I bounced back and um, made some vegetable spaghetti. Which was delicious, might I add. And I have a new love for mushrooms. Okay. So, um, you know, again, I'm still in the wilderness. I'm still searching, um, wandering, but I'm thriving. So thanks for asking. <laughs> well, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. And Thank how you. are you off air? We were talking about Adriana's jeans. Apparently, uh, 
God. Being in the wilderness makes her gain weight. Being mind in the wilderness. You, mind you, she's still a double zero. But. I, bitch. Bitch. I am not. I wish I was a double zero. You know what? Let me tell you something Skinny people love to get about thick. Americans. Okay? Skinny, <laughs> lo- Skinny people love to get thick. Like, look. Being a man. I'm it up. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> yes, I am. Let me tell you why I'm thick. Okay? Because, so... Last August, I bought these shorts from H&M, uh, not H&M, Topshop. Topshop is a European brand, mm-hmm. right? And European sizes are generally, generally smaller than American sizes. So, I went and bought these shorts from Topshop. They're size 8. A 8. That's okay. big. That's European sizes, though. Girl, when I say that thing can't even, that it doesn't even, it doesn't even fasten. I tried them on last night. And you know what? I'll send you the picture because I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. I had a muffin top. <laughs> it was gross. It was awful. But not to... not, And I'm, I'm just not used to that. With was it water? Is it water weight? I don't know what it is. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know what it could be. But... Are you I, pregnant? Hell no. Oh, okay. But no, I, as... I've noticed an increase of weight. Uh, the other day, I was trying to find some clothes for work, and none of my pants fit me. And they, uh, like this one pair of pants that I wore all the time, they actually used to be baggy on me. Now they're tight. So you just been in tights all week. Girl, I'm trying to figure out how, I, I mean, how tights am I going to do dresses. this? Tights and dresses and sweats. Just trying to figure it out. But yes, I've... Um, Acquired some some meat. <laughs> it's kind of exciting. Oh my god! Because <laughs> now I can stand gain like those two, girls. Gain two pounds. <laughs> and she thinks you treat them. <laughs> girl, I'm standing woo, woo, in the mirror. Come on, I stand, ass fat. Woo, woo. Look, I stand in the mirror a little longer, and I do like one of those Instagram model poses where my like one leg's cocked up. <laughs> and then like my, my and you always gotta arch, stand to the side and too. I stand to the side and I'm like man I could I could no do damn. it don't I can do throw it that's like the, what yeah, 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 got more yeah, booty yeah, in the butt yeah Cisco so made that song and he sent me in my thong 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 yeah I'm here for it I'm here it's jiggling it's I right here I can't you hear that that's me it's me I'll post a picture of her this week and no, you guys, you have to see it. I'm not. I'll show you right now. I'm not ashamed of it. I can't take this. It's a total muffin top, (laughs) and that shit was painful trying to just. <laughs> but, you, but why are you standing so awkward? It's like you knew it and then you just went to stand awkward. Like why are you standing so crazy? Because I wanted that's the full effect. But that's why are you standing so never mind. I can't take this photo seriously. So why guys, are you standing ridiculously? And I up? used to wear these I mean, the, like these things hurt my <gasps> vagina. Why I look like you you push it out like your stomach and pelvic area too, like to make sure we know. <laughs> I can barely I get it to me. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> a bitch is thick. Terrible. Yes, guys. So watch some food documentaries. Eat your vegetables, guys. Not a lot of people eat vegetables. And then I noticed on Instagram, I've seen a lot of people that have like the diabetes, dark skin. Mm-hmm. And I can start, and I started to notice that. So, you know, you guys, eat your vegetables. Drink man. your water. Drink water. Stop drinking sugary drinks. Even though I basically drank a two liter Pepsi in like three days, I was stressed out. Yeah, sitting right. But there. but you know what? As long as you balance it, see you have your water. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, I have. But you know, come on, New Year's goals and resolutions. I have do. You I been have. Following them? I have been emptying out the bottles and then throwing them away. I don't do half and half and half and one fourth. I have been following my New Year's Eve goal. Good. That's good. And plus, I'm trying to keep track of the water because I'm trying to get to like a gallon. I feel like everyone who has really good skin say they drink a gallon a day. I drink a lot. Well, now that um, I'm in the wilderness and I'm in a financial cul-de-sac. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not a financial cul-de-sac. I'm in a financial cul-de-sac. So, you know, I like to recycle my water, meaning that at work, 
I like to just fill up all of my water <laughs> bottles. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I do that at work too. I fill up all my water bottles and I feel like, you know, the health department, I mean. You need to get, what I did was get one really big water bottle and I take it to I work. I have the liter one. Yeah, and then I do refill it yes, at work. Yes, but you know at H-E-B they have the liter ones for 98 cents. Oh, really? Yes, the glacier water. And I actually think it's a good tasting water. I, I'm very biased on waters. So, um, but because... Again, I'm in a financial cul-de-sac and I have to. No <laughs> I can't get Fiji. No more Fiji. <laughs> Boy, when your I money gets money, your, <laughs> taste, your taste buds can accumulate. Your taste buds get okay with stuff. Yeah. Like at first, when you be having you know, money, you're like, yeah. I'm an essential Fiji type bitch, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, ugh. Yeah. You drink. You drink. You drink the sunny. Like, like what is that? That's disgusting. Oh my god, you drinking that regular Walmart water? That's when disgusting. your money, yeah. when your money get fucked up. Now I'm just drinking glacier water. <laughs> that that 24 pack yeah. for 250 at yeah. Boulders is yeah. it? Yeah. And you're thirsty. You just put it in the refrigerator, like chill a little bit. Boom. Taste good. <laughs> it's so funny how your taste buds can accommodate your budget. Just because I'm telling you, six just, months ago, a bitch would. I only bought my water at Whole Foods. I'm t- but I'm telling you, just like how I stopped liking McDonald's instantly when I started making money. But before that, like in college, <laughs> no, for real, in college, I look back. I used to kill cheeseburgers. I killed McDonald's. Yeah. And then, like, one day I started getting making money post college and I ate a yeah. cheeseburger. And I was like, yeah. this is terrible. And I haven't eaten one since. Yeah. That dollar menu just doesn't suit my taste buds. <laughs> doesn't but taste right. It doesn't taste right. <laughs> but trust me, if something ever went left, I feel like, I would be like, this cheeseburger good? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like a Chick-fil-A type bitch. Like, you what? Oh, that's expensive. Yeah. See, I, on a good day, see, the other day I had, um, and this is because I've been really trying to eat more vegetables than meat, but I again, I caved again, and I went and I had Raisin Cane's. Oh, they're good too. So, you know, I've stopped eating Chick fil A, but they're expensive. My kids' meal was like six bucks. Yeah. Yeah, Chick fil A, so get that, your you know, that's a, that's a splurge. Yeah. But neither here nor there. But I still won't go to McDonald's or Burger King. No, won't go neither. Only if, I do like McDonald's banana mango smoothie, though. That is good. It's all but healthy. I just don't. No. I haven't been to Ever McDonald's. Ever since I in a saw while. that paste coming out of that machine and that was the chicken nuggets back in. What was that, 05, 06? Oh, I used to kill like chicken nuggets, too. Yeah. I used to get a big kid's meal because they gave you six instead of four. Yeah, I used to do that, too, and I had the honey uh, honey, honey mustard. mustard. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I used to get mine with, with the Coke. I used to get mine with the Coke. And that, that was my club food. Yeah, yeah it was it's delicious. delicious. It was. And then and I got grown. And it was just like <laughs> making real money. Yeah, I started making real money, and I just the, my taste buds couldn't handle it no more. My yeah, stomach was my over stomach, it. Yeah, it, it was, was just it was a lot. It, it was, was a lot. Much. It's kind of how like you drink cheap vodka, but then when you start making money, it's like when somebody offers you anything less, you're like, eh, that's, it's yeah. not kettle one. Yeah. It's not Grey Goose. Yeah. When I was younger, like 21, 22, vodka cranberry. I didn't give a shit what it was. I used to drink Burnett's vodka, and that Burnett's. used to be it. Used to be it's, it was the liquor store in Tallahassee called. Um, Florida State Liquor, something like Seminole Liquor. It was called Seminole Liquor. And I always loved them because they assumed I was 21 because I walked in with somebody with a fake ID. And nice. so I guess they assumed I was 21. So I used to be able to buy liquor even though I was like 18. Then when I finally did turn 21, I had to say I was turning like 25 or something. But whatever. <laughs> no shade. So Burnett's Vodka was at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom, like the one shelf above much, the floor. How much was it? You can get you a good old gallon for $6. What? A and, gallon. It, and this is back in the day before like flavors were really 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 popping and they had grape and watermelon and sour apple and mango and peach and we used to drink the hell out of that brunette's vodka we used to take straight up shots of that brunette's vodka and so that's like you know my freshman year my sophomore year before coins came right, bitch let's go to but let's get that brunette let's get that brunette it, it was this big plastic this thick thick plastic bottle so then I started making coins a little bit and had a little boot thing. Kettle. You're a kettle girl. I want kettle then. This is how you know it goes with your money. So then I went to Smyrnoff. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So after that, I went to Smyrnoff Faka. So that was like my thing. So we used to get Smyrnoff Apple and then I was Ew. like popping. And then my little... I, I accumulated some more money. Uh-huh. My little boot thing was popping. Uh-huh. And then it was Grey Goose and Kettle One. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then it went to Patron. And then after that, I used to like look at other kids like, oh, you drink that? <laughs> then I got real bougie on them hoes and I couldn't take it. Oh, good. The, the evolution of a drink. The evolution of a drinker. <laughs> Telling you. Just how I used to drink Long Islands. Because see, Tallahassee used to, do these, they used to do these $7 pitchers. So, Long Island? 
on Long I'm Island trash. on Tequila Sunrise. Judge people who drink Long Island. Well, that well, when you're a kid and you don't really know, like the only thing I knew was like Long Island. I knew drinks I heard people say on songs or on TV. Mm-hmm. So I used to do these seven dollar pictures at this club called Floyd's, and so you'll get the picture. They'll throw like a billion straws in it. And then when I got older, I realized what was in a Long Island and I got bougie and I was like, I was like, I need Tangeray, Grey Goose. Then I started getting fancy with my Long Islands and started getting top shelf. Oh, I want to, oh, I want a top shelf. Get yeah, out of yeah, here. I need a top Try shelf Long here. Island. It's still trash. And then they'll try to like give you like sky vodka. I was like, no, 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 top shelf. I need to get Grey Goose, Tangare, disgusting, Bacardi rum, and then I used to get mine with Patron. And then I used to make them put Grand Marnier, not that cheap triple sec. But neither here nor there. Disgusting. Yeah, it was good times. <laughs> and the drinks are still like nine dollars because they used to be cheap in college. Damn. Oh, the real life sucks. The real world. It does. Huh, but that's it. So, guys, this week, my Women Crush Wednesday is Jane Toussaint. And Jane Toussaint comes from one of my favorite ever, 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 ever Spike Lee movies, School Days. It's played by Tisha Campbell Martin, Gina from Martin, the show Martin. Um, Jane Toussaint is my woman crush. Well, really, she shouldn't be because Jane Toussaint was so damn dumb. But originally, before we realized she was silly... Jane Toussaint was like the bad bitch on campus. Mm-hmm. Everyone else had like dark hair. Mm-hmm. She had like bleach blonde hair. She was dating Big Brother Almighty. And like <laughs> she was like the head of her um, gamma rays. She could sing. She was part of like the homecoming court. She did a whole dance and song to I Don't Want to Be Alone Tonight, which is still a bop. <laughs> and, and Gina, low key, I follow Gina on like IG. Gina be at she has like a bar uh, like a club with her husband and she sings I don't want to be a I don't want to be alone tonight like every fucking Friday and every <laughs> Friday I wait for her to upload the video and watch her sing. <laughs> but Jay too saw it was like she was just she was like the most popular girl and everyone wanted to be her and I was wondering like how did she become the popular girl because like Jasmine Guy was also in the cast mm-hmm. and like everybody who was a gamma ray was pretty but I think because Jane, you know, had that be- bleach blonde hair mm-hmm. and used to be dressed on them hoes, you know. She she was it. But, so for the most part, she was my she's my woman crush Wednesday because she was like the bitch everybody wanted to be on campus. Now Jane, but Jane's downfall was her dumb ass <laughs> wanting to like be she wanted to be so in the in crowd and she was like so for the gamma rays and so for G5G mm-hmm. that she was willing to do anything to stay cool. So that's what made her uncool in a movie because I never understood how Big Brother Almighty, her nigga, her boyfriend, her man came to her and was like, listen, you need to sleep with half pint. And she was like, I don't want to. And he was like, you need to because this is about, you know, G5G and blah, blah, blah. So she goes and sleeps with Spike Lee's character, for the the frat. Girl, what? Damn. I never understood that part of the movie. I was just like, you dumb bra. Like, up until then, she was untouchable. Like, she, when they did the homecoming float, she was at, like, the top tier of the cake. And all the little minions was down there worshipping her. And she was just such a bad bitch the whole movie. I just don't get it. Why she slept with half pints? He was corny and he was little. We have to <sighs> ask Spike Lee that question. Spike Lee, I got questions. Actually, I you know what? I used to watch. I watched School Day so much. I used to watch the director's cut when he used to like talk mm-hmm. about how he did the movie. And I always just thought it was so crazy. He had a brother who died pledging. And that's kind of where the movie came from. Oh, wow. Ain't that sad? So, yeah. But Jane, Jane was everything. And Jane really, I got questions too. Can Spike Lee um, make me understand why the Jane licked the crack of Big Brother Almighty's forehead during foreplay? <laughs> that always bothered me because it's like out of all the stuff you can do during sex why did you lick the crack of his the, where his part was and then his hair was like always like super greasy like he had product in it and she literally like full throttles like her whole tongue <laughs> down this part and that just always bothered me yeah, so I do have a question I'm gonna I'm tweet Spike Lee maybe he'll help me realize was that impromptu did you ask them to do that you know it, or what is the word um, where they just kind of freestyle um Improv, 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 improv. Yeah, I just, I, I got questions because that always. I need to watch that movie tonight because I still. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tweet him tonight. I'm gonna record it and tweet him and ask Spike Lee because I just need to know how they. How, who was sitting in the writers' room was like, you know, it would be real sexy, <laughs> but it would be real sexy if Jane licks the crack of his head. 
That's it. Yeah. That's it. They're going to go wild. Questions we got to know. Yeah. They're going to go wild. They're going to go wild. So, yeah. Jane's everything. And I don't want to be alone tonight is a bop. And I wish, like... A bop. It's a bop. I love that. You know, that's a, that's and the do it in the bird. Uh, for 2018 that I like. A bop? A bop. It's a bop. It's a bop. It's a bop. But everything about School Days is just... In, it's just a good movie. It's about an HBCU. It's just everything. Their homecoming's bomb. Their homecoming dance is lit. They play doing a butt. It's just... It's such a great movie. Except I really just... I don't... I mean, I get the ending. Because Spike Lee do shit like that. But I just had more questions. And I really felt some type of way about Jane sleeping with Half Pint and then Big Brother Almighty waking up to Jasmine Guy. <laughs> like, I really... And, you know, I need to tweet Jasmine Guy because I was real fucked up because she was supposed to be Jane's friend. But, you know, who am I? <laughs> no, I, that really did bother me. <laughs> it's just like, wait, niggas ain't shit. So you pimp out your girlfriend, then you sleep with her best friend, Jane? Oh, that holds some hands. These niggas living that life out here right now. Uh, Jane needs to get a nigga some hands. But I'm happy. I love Tisha Campbell. I'm not here for that Martin reboot. Why? But why am I not here for it? Um, because, A, okay, from Jump, all I wanted from the cast of Martin was to reunite and give me like a 15 to 20 minute interview where they talk about the good old days and everybody cracked jokes. And I think I was on Facebook today and I actually asked for a reunion. I asked, Would you, do we think we'll ever get a Martin reunion? I asked that question like three or four years ago because I've been dedicated to this Martin reunion. <laughs> However, I'm a kid of the 90s and I remember Martin and I remember what went down. Tisha Campbell was like the original Me Too and Time's Up celebrity chick. Right. She stopped Martin. I didn't... What I want from Martin is a reunion, but if y'all gonna do a reboot, I, I y'all need to answer my '90s questions. What the fuck went down? Because not only did Tisha quit the show, Tisha quit that damn show mid season. Mm -hmm. She didn't even let them play out her goddamn contract. Tisha was like, "Nah, I don't fuck with that nigga. I don't fuck with production." I'm out. What y'all will do is record me at my house pretending to be on phone with Martin. I'm not showing up to shit. I'm not saying bye to... Tisha Campbell did not even say bye to us. Like, she didn't even show up in Detroit to pack her shit to move to L.A. with Martin. Tisha Campbell was just in L.A. Like, we didn't even get to see this bitch for, like, yeah. four or five episodes. Like, all the episodes was like, Gina! Oh man, Gina just left. Gina! Oh man, you just missed Gina. She just yeah. went downstairs. So like Gina, and she left mid damn season of that show. So whatever happened, which I've read different stories, whatever truly happened was offensive enough for her to leave the show at the height of the show, right? In the middle of the season and not give a fuck, right? Like you didn't give a fuck about them. People didn't even that show was on Fox. Fox didn't even hold your ass to your contract. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened was. A big deal. Right. So I guess for me, it's a bit confusing. And I get it, it's been like 20 years, but the claims were sexual harassment or sexual assault. Right. And the fact that you left the way you left. And you didn't fuck with that nigga all this time. And everybody knew you didn't fuck with that nigga. Yeah. It's just very off to me. It's to, like I'm happy to see them together. I enjoyed the picture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's kind of off for me to see them together because it's just like, but bitch. The fifth season of Martin, we gotta have a conversation. Like you, I mean, the original. Just like, I mean, that's just like Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. No, right? Janet don't fuck with that nigga. Don't bring that okay. shit. I'm sorry. I forgot. No, no Janet don't fuck. We don't fuck with. Fuck you, Justin Timberlake <laughs> and the Super Bowl and all that. We don't. Fuck, we, don't fuck with, we don't know that nigga. And I know Janet still away because I was on Instagram and no. Vogue. Vogue put up a picture. It was like, are you team Janet? And Duh. then gave like a little paragraph Duh. about what happened. And Janet came through and commented. It was like, basically, thank y'all. Y'all y'all know I'm goddamn Janet DeBeer Joe Jackson. Duh. No. Ain't the same thing. <laughs> I mean, right. <laughs> Show up that nigga. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, but it, I mean, uh, there had to have been some type of conversation prior to that picture. Oh, Clearly. So I'm Because sure. I mean she was kissing him on the cheek. Yeah, so she was kissing him on the cheek. I mean it, it's probably been from the looks of the pictures, it had to be multiple conversations. Cause they they didn't seem like this is our first time seeing each other. Right, yeah. It seemed very when I watched even the clip of her like talking, it seemed like a very happy and joyous, joyous time. Yeah. So I'm just what happened? So was it not as serious as you claimed it to be? Or is it just not that serious 20 years later? Or, and then I always had questions, too, even back in the day. The thing about that whole Martin and um, Tisha thing, 
Tashina Arnold never fell out with Martin. And mm-hmm. I always found that interesting because the story is that Tisha and Tashina had known each other since they've been kids because they traveled Europe mm-hmm. together with Little Shop of Horrors. Mm-hmm. And then Tashina and Tisha were also roommates. So Tisha auditioned for Martin, got the role of Gina. Mm-hmm. Tashina also auditioned for Martin. They didn't know Tashina and Tisha were roommates. Mm-hmm. Tashina gets the job, becomes Pam. Martin comes over to the apartment to rehearse with Gina or Tisha and sees Tashina there and was like, oh, y'all real life best friends. And I'm like, yeah, that's my dog. Mm -hmm. So for you and this, for you and this girl to be so super duper close and then this whole situation happened, Tashina kind of still was cool, was cool with Martin. Right. They worked on other movies together. They weren't like enemies by any means. So it's like, what happened? What happened for that? For you to act the way you reacted but then for to Maybe she the to Illuminati tried to get her. Child by. And bitch, you still, y'all still, oh, I mean, I don't want to reboot. I don't want to reboot now, especially because I feel like 90 shows, people won't be as open to the jokes and to the things that happen on mm-hmm. a lot of shows, past shows, because all you niggas want to do is give a think piece and hate watch TV. Because y'all hate watch TV all the time. That is why that Aaliyah movie was like number one watched movie on Lifetime that year. Because even though we hate stuff and complain about how they shouldn't do stuff, we watch it to hate watch it, to tweet about it, and still make stuff number one. So it's like a sick cycle. Yeah. So y'all gonna watch Martin, because I keep seeing these tweets like, well, the stuff he said about Pam won't fly. Martin's a male chauvinist. Martin was a bully to his friend. So it's like, I'm reading all these tweets, and it's like, y'all not gonna even let it be fun. But it's the younger generation that... Nah, it was, it was a lot of people. It wasn't even just like the millennials saying that shit. It was people. They're just like, half the shit that Martin said originally won't fly. Yeah. In 2017, based on all well, these organizations so and groups. sensitive. Yeah, because hey, yeah. you have to be politically correct. So it was like, Everybody he can't be calling sense. Pam Donkey and BDB. But I'm like, they call Martin Short and a dwarf. Like, it's not like he insulted everybody. Yeah. It was equal. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, people are just fucking sensitive. And, but you know, I knew that when my homegirl sent me an article from BuzzFeed, and it was like 25 reasons why Ross is the worst person on earth. On like friends. What? And I read the article and they were like pulling stuff like he was upset that Ben played with the Barbie and he went and let Phoebe believe that her mother was the, in living in the spirit of the cat. Ross was so funny. Ross, Ross is, is the, the funniest. The funniest kid. I love that he loves uh, paleontology. <laughs> and I love that he he's so into his... He's like his... corny too, but it's really weird because he's like, a, he's corny, but I, he's not just, like a dork. I love, like, he's like, you know, yeah, guys, I love these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and God. And everybody's just like looking at him like, Yo, motherfucker, really? I love the fact that Rachel used to hate on all his relationships. And she, Rachel, that, that nigga was never going to be happy. Rachel would not. <laughs> the only way Ross could date is if Rachel liked somebody. Trust me, if Rachel was single, Ross had to be single too. And that always took me down. And the fact that he used to go in on Monica all the time about I their loved, childhood. I loved Ross, man. And the fact that his parents loved him and couldn't low-key stand Monica. I loved them. I mean, so, my favorite episode of Friends was when Brad Pitt was on there. You know, they and, hated Rachel. And, and, <laughs> and they formed that I Hate Rachel <laughs> Green Club. <laughs> you know, and she didn't she didn't remember who he was. So she was like, who's that guy over there in the corner? He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> And he's like ripping the fucking thing, the little flower wreath. Yeah. Part. And <laughs> Ross was like, "Be cool, man. Be cool." <laughs> no, the one episode where Monica was like, "I'm gonna make my parents cry." It might have oh, been like at her the wedding. wedding. Yeah. So she kept like. No, it was their anniversary. It was something. It was like their anniversary. Yeah, she was going to make a speech. <laughs> and she was just like, you know, when Nana died in that terrible, terrible death. And, and they was like, like, what? <laughs> and, and then Ross like, goes up there and was just like, I love you guys. Ross, you're just so sweet. You <laughs> have such a way with words. I love like, it. Oh, Ross yo, is our favorite character. Ross used to go in on Monica so much. That shit was funny. Oh, Monica being fat was always a good joke. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Ross, is, Ross and Rachel. Ross, Rachel. Oh, I do like Rachel. Ross and Rachel top two for sure. Yes, I love Ross. He's my favorite, especially when he talks about his paleontology. When he dated he talks the, about dinosaurs. When he dated the girl with the messy apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and he killed the rat and it was like her pet. <laughs> like, what the fuck is 
is wrong with him? <laughs> or like low key Russell's dating his student at the college. Like Russell's so <laughs> damn dumb. <laughs> Oh my god, that show was so stupid. He hated uh, his ex wife's new wife, and that was funny as hell to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, Ross. Good times. <sighs> but, anywho, so shout out to people from Martin. I'm happy that y'all can, can cash a check. Oh, and what y'all won't do about Tisha Campbell is say that she hasn't worked since Martin. That is a damn lie. Yes. Y'all my wife to, and kids. My wife and my kids. My it. wife and kids is everything Get but on top it. of that she had that one show on lifetime and she was like a she always was on everybody hates chris so y'all need to just go ahead and hit your little google search it's not tisha does, does because tisha some need the, on her. does tisha need the martin money who wouldn't want the martin money because martin not gonna sign they're not gonna do that show without a good check period so everybody even martin want the martin money but what y'all won't act like she was just sitting around the house doing nothing since Gina. And she was on um, Kevin Hart's show, Husbands they, of Hollywood. Husbands of Hollywood was like one of my favorite it's shows. actually a really good show. No, because they go in on each other and yeah. like with their real life though. Yeah. Like when they be talking about when Robert Thick came back after he was like doing <laughs> all like the drugs and stuff, that shit took me down or when they just talked about Nick Cannon's divorce to Mariah yes. Carey yes. Husbands of Hollywood was a, a funny, funny show oh man I remember when that's a very no, un- when Tamar guest appeared he was like you'll never be Tony and it's like wait what <laughs> <laughs> wait <laughs> Seriously. oh my god or how they played Boris Kojo because he thought he was fine even no. though he is uh yeah, that was such a good. That is a good show. Did they cancel that? What happened I to that show? I have no idea. I mean, it was on BET, so and but it, it ran for a while. Yeah, yeah, it ran for. It a had while. like four or five seasons. Yeah, they did a good job with that yeah. show. That show was. I funny. thought that was a really funny, funny show because they really talked about the niggas in like real life, or even like when Tisha used to come on camera, they'll just be like Gina. Like what? Like yes. why do y'all keep doing I this love, to her? Yeah. Why totally. do y'all keep calling this lady Gina? <laughs> totally. <laughs> show used to kick me i love it okay and with that we're gonna take a quick break so we can hear from our friends over at youngish adults listen to me your kids are sick and tired just hearing grown-ups talking and talking on a podcast well i'll tell you how to cheer them up Listen to a brand new podcast called Youngish. Youngish has a weekly show where I get to talk about what my mom is going on in the world and what it's like to grow up together. Find us on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts and check us out. We are recovering from social media. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, my friends. <laughs> the evil. The evil social media. Not, well, social media is terrible. Well, <sighs> It's just Did you so have draining? It, it can be very draining because people make that shit so draining. So when did you start? Like I remember. Did you get on MySpace? I did. Oh, well, I didn't have a MySpace. Oh, you, your top eight was serious, bitch. That was a serious thing. It was top ten. Oh, top. It I'm was sorry. a serious thing. It was a serious. So thing. So was a guy in your top ten? Or you so like it your was, best friend? It was my. It was my best friend. It was the boy that I was dating. Oh, your best friend came before the nigga. Absolutely. Bro, bros before bro, hoes. Uteruses before deuteruses. I cannot take it. <laughs> um, and then it was all like, it, I mean, it was like a legit thing. And if somebody was moved, it was a phone call. Like, why you moved me out of your house? Like, I why, was, I why, was there before. Why, what happened? You know, because that's like a really lot. Like, that's a real thing. Like, damn, I got 10 spots. Who am I going to put in my top 10? Because my homegirl, she put me as her top two. But I can't put her because I got to put my nigga in top two. And then I got to put my other best friend in. Like, damn, this shit's like for real. It's almost like, like, it's a stressful thing. Because you don't want anybody to be survivor. offended. Yeah, it's like survivor. You don't want nobody to be offended. And then you want to be people's top top one. So, even though they're your seven. Even though they're your seven. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I had the um, Sex in the City, the first movie. I had that that uh, picture as a backdrop to my uh, mm-hmm. to my wall. Yeah, what was what was your song? So I I switched my songs out all the time. Okay. So it, I think one was like Sierra. When Sierra was, came out was Goodies. Okay. See that. And That's then, a good one. Um, and then I started getting into uh, the Sex and the City soundtrack. So it was um, 
I was really heavy into Sex in the City, so it was that soundtrack was good though. Yeah, Sierra that, had a song on that album. Yes, and Fergie, I think. Yeah, yeah, and Jennifer Hudson had one. Oh, too. she sure did. So actually, Jennifer Hudson was the uh, the soundtrack playing before I stopped using it. Oh. But yes, and then I remember I did a, a survey because I wanted people to know who I was. Oh my God. <laughs> I, the only thing I remember about MySpace, my best friend had one. And every time she beat for her boyfriend, you could tell based on the song she was playing. <laughs> so like, when she was happy, it was like Ashanti song happy, literally. It was like the pace is all bright and just so great. And then like, the next yeah. day, you know, 12 hours later, there'll yeah. be that some, I mean, some childish shit at school. Yeah. And so it'll be foolish and all of a sudden the page is dark. And yeah. it's like, how, how did you do this so Yeah. Um, I remember, like, it, I mean, that was such a big deal because people <laughs> really took that shit seriously. Like, yeah, I didn't your page dictated who and what you were, who your friends were. Like, like even, like, the comments on the side, like, where friends could leave little comments and shit. <laughs> like, I remember uh, when, I forget the hurricane, but it was like in 2009 and I had went to Dallas and my friend had like put all, my best friend had put all these messages on my MySpace page. Like, where are you? What are you doing? You better be safe. And I'm like, girl, I'm fine. And I'm like, we're flying back. Like, I'm good, oh okay, girl. God. I cannot <laughs> take it. I cannot. <laughs> And, but, you know, I used to, at first I was so, like, against MySpace, but then when I got into it, I was like, and then you could, like, put the emoji that you're feeling of the day. Oh, my God. So, I, I was always, that. like, bossy. <laughs> 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 or, like, mo- like I had the money symbol, I like, cannot, the money emoji. I cannot with the, take eye, it. the dollar signs in the eyes, because I was making money at the time. <sighs> or, like, I put feeling sick today. <laughs> Oh, my space. And then uh, I remember my ex-boyfriend, the baseball player. I remember after we had broke up, he had, I went on his MySpace page and he had put feeling played. Yeah. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> 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 oh. But that's neither here nor there. But no, yes, yeah, I did I have a MySpace. I didn't, I didn't get into MySpace, but Facebook came out my freshman year of college. And this is when... Um, this is fresh. It was like new. Uh-huh. So I stayed in a private dorm. So even though I went to FAMU, I stayed with Florida State and um, Tallahassee Community College students as well. Mm-hmm. So when Facebook came out, it was for Ivy League schools. Mm-hmm. I, I, if you guys ever watched the movie, it started off for his school. Then it branched off to the other Ivy League schools. Mm-hmm. Then it went down to like the Florida States and the University of Miami's and, you know. The community colleges. Yeah. It, no, it did, no, then it went to Florida State. And then I tried to get on realized I couldn't because this is back in the day where you it had to be a college email address. Mm-hmm. So it was .edu. And so then they had like a link. God, this is really the conception of Facebook. They had a link to say request your school. So then people were requesting like my college and then uh, other kids mm-hmm. were requesting their school because then schools in the same city were getting on and now you can't get on. So it's like you, we went in and requested FAMU and people start requesting FAMU and then one day it opens up and now FAMU can get on it. And then it went to, then it went to community colleges and then it was all cool. It was, I like Facebook yeah. low key when it was just college students, no shade because you know, mm-hmm. nobody want to see their mamas and mm-hmm. all these other people, but whatever. Uncles and aunts. Aunts and stuff. So I got on Facebook. It was like a big deal. It was, it was everything. I ended up getting off within that same year though, because like all you things. You had your original, you put in your toy Ebony? No, it was uh, my full name at fanview.edu. Actually, I found no, my what old was your, what was oh, your? It was my first and last name. Yeah, th- but so this was before like, no. Nicoya, I get stacks. Well, this, this, is before all, this is before they let non-college people in. The niggas. Yeah, before niggas was allowed to show up to the function. <laughs> so back then, it was, like, it was like your first and last name. Right. It was it was way cleaner. Like Facebook now has ads and so much other stuff you could do on Facebook. That shit was white and blue. It was very easy clean. to maneuver. Yeah. It was clean. You know, simple status. Simple statuses. Simple comments. Simple comments. You know, it started off as this good thing. So then you kind of start poking around. It's before you could be like private and before yeah. you could do yeah. like comments, but yeah. only two people can see them. Right. Before all of that. So I was talking to this guy, of course, because it's always a guy. And um, some girl tagged him on a picture on his page. And she all dressed for like the club. And I'm like, who is this man? 
bitch that tagged you. Because I'm trying to figure out how I seen this girl picture. Because Facebook's still new, so I don't know how I'm really working it. So I see the picture. I got pissed. All this shit go down. And I realize you can tag people. <laughs> so then that's when life got a little bit petty. So he was tagging him back. I did tag him back. <laughs> well, like the bitch I am. So we went on like a tagging war. <laughs> We did. And so, like, one day, he was supposed to, you know, be doing something productive. Mm -hmm. And I go up his page, because, you know, I missed him. You know, it had been like an hour or two. <laughs> you know, like every college girl who's in love. I missed them. And so I go to his page to write on his wall, like, you know, every lame college girl does. This bitch wrote on his wall. And she was like... Oh, you could see who wrote on their wall. Yeah, if this is before... This is before... Because Facebook got a little... I think Facebook got savvy when they let everybody in because then they, people's parents started getting gay. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of Facebook privacy stuff was really so kids could do what they want to do without their parents and their business. Yeah. But before all you the sure rules... You could see yeah, before what all, people were writing on your Yeah, wall. before Ooh. all the rules and regulations... I go to his wall because I'm about to write a note and this bitch wrote a note and was like, hey, I can't wait to get out the shower because I want to play spades. Bitch. She wrote that? Bitch, what? Yes. So I see the comment and I was about to comment under this bitch because, you know, that's how I am. I'm, I'm going to do that anyway. That's how I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite gift. Because I was going to do that, do that anyway. anyway. <laughs> that's how I am. But then something was just like, you know what? e -bizzle. <laughs> don't be a terrible tyrant so like a few hours later he's he's ends up coming over or whatever and then i like show him this is before you could screenshot shit and all that so i had to like load up my computer and do the whole nine this is before facebook had apps and shit all it this is this is and this is like 10 years ago it's crazy how quickly technology went so i had to you know load up my dell computer and be like what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> So then we both end up getting off Facebook because, A, he was a hoe and Facebook was, you know. Hoe central. Yeah, hoe central and catching him up and he didn't want to be caught up every week. Right. And then I got off because I was just tired of people started, tagging right. and all that extra dumb shit. And right. I, I needed my sanity. <laughs> you started trying to threaten people. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to write on people's wall and be a tyrant. So I got off. And I didn't get back on Facebook until like my last semester of my second senior year because then I realized I was leaving and I wanted to keep in contact with people but for the duration majority of college I wasn't on Facebook but the thing that's so lovely about Facebook everybody else was on it so I still was nosy as hell right. I just didn't have the pressure of it <laughs> yeah because he needed to get off though he wasn't gonna last on Facebook he had too many hoes yeah it wasn't gonna work out my Facebook I was really uh against Facebook when my friends were trying to uh, get me off. Oh, of you was like space. MySpace is everything. Yeah. God, and how quickly so that got and then, you know, and I had a lot of friends that went to U of H, so they're like, you need to get on Facebook, 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 Facebook girl, in a relationship, Facebook, single, Facebook? and this, what? Right? This that's what you can tag bitch too. Yeah. So yeah. like, a nigga so that's put a in serious, a yeah. that's a serious thing. He'll put in a relationship, but really, he said he's in a relationship with five people because you thinking it's about mm -hmm. you, but it's, but it's really, about Monica yeah. and yeah. Tiffany. Yeah. But because it, it's before um, you can tag a bitch. Yeah. So <laughs> I, um, I was very, very hesitant, and then um, at the time, my my dad's ex wife. She was real. I don't know what it was, but she just kept finding me on like social media. And I had put up this picture of a little fat kid, and it was like this little fat white boy. And he had a shirt on that says, um, I fuck on first dates. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was so funny. So I put that as my, as my default picture. Mm -hmm. Again, I just thought it was just funny because he had a little lunchbox, he had a little <laughs> juice in his hand, and he had this t-shirt on that said, I fuck on the first date. And, you know, that's just my sense of humor. So when I first got on to Facebook, I had my 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 real name. And this is where Adriana Cool kind of came from. Came from. That's where Natoya Ebony came so from. This some is, shit. Some bullshit. Yeah, some bullshit. So this is where, you know, Adriana Cool uh, came from was... I, um, my, my stepmom or my dad's ex-wife, she had called my dad and was like, your daughter is on Facebook just wilding. Wilding. Oh, she said, I hate she when said, adults got she, on Facebook. She I hate said it. she fucks on the first day. Hated it. She got a picture of a little boy saying she fucks on the first day. She got all this shit on. 
So and at the time, my, my page was open so people could see it. I heard my dad called me and he was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What is this fucking Facebook and, and why the fuck are you, you have sex on the first date? <laughs> so I'm like, what are you, like, I'm so like, dad, what are you, I was like, I was like, dad, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, I don't understand what you're fucking talking about. What are you talking about? He was just like, I know you're on Facebook and I know that you're saying that you fuck on the first date. What, what who raised you? What, 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 what's wrong with you? So I'm like, how did, like, Dad, I said, first of all, Dad, it's a picture as my default picture. He goes, it's the internet. That shit is on there forever. So now guys are going to look at your profile. And know you fuck on the first date. He's like, going to fuck on the first date. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm really thinking, like, who... Like, I didn't know, like, I was looking at, like, my friends. Like, none of my friends Boy, were, ain't that the first thing you none do? None of my friends were, like, like... You start trying to see who the narc is? Yes. Like, and then, the so, I kept getting these friend requests from her to... to And so, mm-hmm. I was just, like... And then I put two and two together. I was like, oh, she's trying to be my friend because she wants to feed Lurk. my dad information about what I'm doing. So, that's when I changed my name to... And then I was, like, thinking, like, okay... What goes with Adriana? What, what goes with Adriana? Adriana, Adriana. And I was like coming up with all these like mm-hmm. different names. I'm like, I'm cool. Adriana, cool. That's, that was, that, Boom. that's how Latoya Ebony was born. A, because I got back on Facebook. I didn't, I wanted my friends to, because this is still yeah. before Facebook was like super, like now it's all these options to do different mm-hmm. things. Facebook didn't have all those options originally. So I wanted to get back on. I um didn't want to go under my name because I didn't want people right. searching me. Right. So because and I, and then plus I already had had the page because I actually found my old page randomly when I was just like skimming through Facebook. So um I was like, well, what name can I do? What name can I do? So I did Natoya is actually my middle name. So I flipped it and did Natoya Ebony, mm-hmm. and that's how that was born because I just didn't want people to find me. Yeah. And then, you know. And then it, I, my profile picture wasn't me. So I was becoming friends with like my friends, but mm-hmm. people didn't really because people really didn't know my middle name like that right, to begin with. Right. So that's how Natoya Ebony was actually born. Yeah, on some so, on some scheming Facebook shit. Yeah, me too. Because I didn't want people to find me either. And then I just hated when you niggas came because then you just couldn't politely put your middle name or your first name. Like <laughs> I get money. Yeah, Sharonda. <laughs> I get money, Jones. Like girl, what? Or <laughs> Tiffany about that life, Mackenzie. <laughs> like you. Or, just, Sahara, I hate my baby daddy, but I still love him. I yeah, st- like all of that. And it's like a long ass something. And it's just like, how did, why do y'all do that? Why y'all just can't be, you know, Erica Washington? <laughs> like, why can't you just be <laughs> Tiffany Danielle? Like, I hated you niggas when y'all. And then, like, I hated when my family got on, because I, I put my grandma on Facebook. And my grandma be on Facebook. And my really? grandma's on Lurker, too. Because it'll be some shit, like, she'll mention something on Facebook, and it'll be like, well, you didn't like it, so how you seen it? <laughs> and I'll be feeling away about that. Like, how, how you know all this? My stuff? dad, he, like, he, my, I, th- I feel like my dad stalks me on Facebook. My mama stalks me. Because every post that I, that I post, He's like he comments or and his Mama. thing his thing is and so my dad has these these like phrases that he uses so it's either boom <laughs> <laughs> that no mind yeah. but I think it's so funny because he'll be like every it doesn't matter what I post he'll just be like boom or <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's so funny girl my mom will give you a whole paragraph on a post like do yeah. not post not, my mama is going to give you a, a, a paragraph because that's what she does and she but one thing about her too she reposts just stuff like she's one of them parents that if you're doing something and she likes what you're doing or even if she don't like what you're doing she'll repost it and be like check out my sons whatever mm-hmm. check yeah. out my daughters no. whatever no. she gon' comment she gon' like and she one of them niggas that can't like just like a post and move on just to like it and then be like that was such a lovely picture. It's like, you liked it already. Just move on already. <laughs> <Yeah. right>? Scroll, <laughs> scroll. <laughs> no, my other, my dad's other phrase is, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> boom. boom. Now you no, know. No, <laughs> seriously. It's either boom or now you know. And then like my mom, she got on Facebook, you know, and before I was really provocative. I would post provocative things and, um, you know, my mom, you know, she got on. She didn't understand. She's like, what 
what are you what are you posting <laughs> but you know like now i don't pers- i don't post anything personal like nothing that, nothing that's why i didn't like facebook that's when i really stopped like liking facebook and then i just recently got myself out of that because of my cousins i guess yeah. we're considered millennials because they said like the the oldest millennial will be 35. Right. So even though we're considered millennials, I consider them terrible kids from the 90s, real millennials. So when my family started getting on terrible face, yeah, they said, the yeah, the terrible <laughs> 90s kids. When I started getting on, um, when my family started getting on Facebook, I was like waiting to like add the niggas. And so then like, I remember like having a couple people call me like, I requested you on Facebook. And it's just like, oh God, now I got to add like yeah. such and such. Yeah. And I knew because me adding them would be me having to dilute what I said because first, it was like a free for all at one point. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just like, like bust a lie open. Fuck, fuck, fuck that bitch. Yeah, no man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that nigga tried me. Like when I look at my, when they show you your history tweets, your history yeah, posts, girl. I get a little shame. Yeah. Like, what the hell was I talking about? Yeah, like why was I so personal <laughs> on this shit <laughs> so like when my family started getting on it's like I diluted it because you know you don't want to offend your memo you know and your aunties and stuff so then my cousins that are younger than me they literally grew up in this whole Facebook mm-hmm. era so they've been on Facebook since they've been in elementary school since middle school and them niggas be wilding <laughs> like they at this at these hoes I just started cussing on my Facebook like within the past two months my cu- like cussing like recently cussing with my whole family being on there before that it was a Swallowing. But when my family got there, it's like I cleaned up my whole acts. You know, I was kind of yeah. like, I don't be letting people just post my little random pictures yeah. at the bar. Like I was very like yeah. untagging yeah. shit, yeah. like get that off my wall. Yeah. And, you know, when people used to be in my comment section cussing, I'm like trying to delete it. So, you know, my aunt don't see. But my cousins that are like in their early 20s, I'm like, man, fuck that shit. Them hoes and like smoking weed in their pictures and stuff. <laughs> and it was actually them that kind of let me release. Yeah, you're, the, yeah, you're like, and then I started this podcast and after that it was kind of like, why well, mm-hmm. am I? Yeah. I'm telling so what's business. your favorite um, social media stream? Uh, Twitter. Mine too. I, like, I love Twitter. I like Twitter because I, I like, well, like, I, Facebook to me is grown, grown. Like, I, I have more people on Facebook. No, no I don't. The people I have on Facebook engage more because I think we've been on Facebook for so mm. long. I got on Twitter when Twitter first started and I was like kind of on and off because Facebook was a popping one. So I was kind of on and off Twitter. I think I had my account since like 2007 or 8. But with Twitter, it's more thought provoking. People are funny. People love you, Twitter. If you get the right group of people to on your Twitter. timeline... You just spend your day. No, I've literally been on the sofa for two hours just like going through my timeline and literally in the house laughing by myself. Like, that shit be so (laughs) funny. I be cackling all the time. Or even like, I like it too because when you watch TV, it's like you're watching TV with the world. So like if a movie, like... And something comes out. Like, so I'm trying to yeah. war the BT and you're, wars. And you're just going, like, you're you're watching it with everybody. Yeah, it's so like, I'm it. scrolling through, like, Real Housewives Twitter of Atlanta. Is, Twitter is so underrated because everybody keeps talking about Instagram, Instagram. Instagram is... is it's easy. It's it's convenient. It's more... Um, it's trash. Vanity. Vanity. Yes, it's very but narcissistic. You know, and it's and I, I hate it. Like, I just hate it. You know, Instagram, the article I read last year... When it, when it came to, like, teen suicide rates, it was Instagram that was actually the number one social media outlet that causes teens to commit suicide because no one's posting their bad day on Instagram. You're right. not going to catch me. Yeah, everybody with, has a good day. Yeah, everybody, everybody can pay rent. Everybody, everybody got, got Alexis. Got yes, everybody. Everybody <laughs> eating five-star meals. They're not yeah, going to show every, you eating McDonald's. Yeah, and yo, and everybody, <laughs> everybody's a boss. Yeah. Everybody getting a bag. Everybody's an influencer. Everybody's, everybody's an a public, influencer. A public figure. figure. Everybody's an ambassador. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Everybody Where are the dress? regular people? <laughs> like, you never look raggedy. You woke up like, like this. Like, everybody's wig. So you, so you get confused because people are giving you angles in certain good days of their life, not realizing that bitch missed her rent two months and she got an eviction notice while she while she got this and screenshot. She has an air mattress. Yeah, while she got this screenshot of this meal at Papa Do's that got you thinking she got coins. So they said, yeah. I don't mind. It's, I mean, I don't mind any of them. My favorite by far is Twitter, though. Yes, my favorite by far is Twitter. I do like Instagram because I follow a lot of, like, um, I really like design. 
So I follow a lot of like interior design or like brand agencies oh, yeah, that right. like do like just like creative. I like I follow a lot of creatives. I don't necessarily follow a lot of like influencers or whatever because to me that shit's all fake. But I do like to follow like interior designers or like filmmakers or people that are like doing shit that I want to do. You should, but you should create. I remember Oprah made a comment about your house should meet you when you, your house should greet you when you come in, meaning mm-hmm. your house should be a reflection of you. What I did before, and if I have to do it again, I will. I cleaned up the people I followed mm-hmm. in my areas because. You know, I like the shade room. I'm not going to lie. I do go read the shade room in my downtime. But if you go to the comment section of the shade room. It's and total you, trash. Yes, yeah, you spend an hour just reading comments on the shade room. You can't help but feel a negative vibe. Like, yeah. that is what it is. Yeah. And a funny part is, I think Tia Mori put a picture of her being pregnant. They put it on the shade room. Terrible comments. They put that same picture on Essence. Um, IG and the comments was like oh my god she's glowing she's beautiful look at her oh my mm-hmm. god we're so happy she's pregnant you know bless mm-hmm. that baby and then you go to the shade room it's like why well, that bitch look oh ugh, she ugly she yeah, ain't aging she well had, yeah, she ah, had, like gray ah, hair or something. Ah. Yeah. yeah that she doesn't want to die though on top of all of that she says she don't want to dye her hair so like you have to find a balance because it's like a rabbit hole you can go down where super you will end up feeling super negative or you're just reading so much negativity and you I, I think you carry some of that stuff with you i agree so i have to like stop myself a lot of times from delving too heavy into mm-hmm. the comment sections because y- y'all are really tough on a lot of these celebrities and just i think people in general are just i think it, like People are just tough on people, period. And there's so many trolls. Well, and it's so easy to hide behind a computer screen. Yeah. Because I remember some somebody was telling me a story how some guy called a celebrity ugly. No, it, some guy called a celebrity ugly. My, my friend commented and was like, went to his page, saw a picture of his mother, and he was begging for likes, like, y'all better like my mom's picture, she's beautiful. So my friend made a comment, this celebrity look better than your mama who you begging likes for. The guy comments, my mom is sick, you're insensitive. It's like, no, you're insensitive. Why are you being negative on somebody else's page? Mm-hmm. I didn't know your mama was sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you, it's like, it's a rabbit hole, and I feel bad for people. Honestly, I'm happy. You know, I came up in an era where... None of this. Social media yeah, was a thing. It. Girl, I'm so glad yeah. that social media was not a thing until I was wrong. half, half, half an wrong. adult. Yeah. Because <laughs> my thing was, in high school, the little boy I was dating went to the rival high school. One of my best friends went to another one of the high schools in the city. And then her sister went to another high school. And between the four of us, the drama was immense, like between the schools and we kept up and it was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And this is back in the day when you had to go, you had to leave school, go get to on the, the bus, other, go to the yeah, other school, get on the bus to go home. Or maybe if you were 16 or whatever, your friend might've had a car so then you can go to the other school. Mm-hmm. But either way, it had to be a process to transfer this information that happened at the separate send schools. Send the notes. Yeah. Send to, to talk about what happened at these schools on different days versus right now you sitting in class and something go down you text your home girl so i just imagine the drama and bullshit in high schools right now is like immense and you know it's immense because now they're creating laws about cyberbullying. yeah and just even that girl lulu like the boy want they it was a five dollar bet but then y'all want to oh, go yeah. viral so yeah. y'all snatching this girl wig off yeah and then you other bitches is following her in the bathroom recording her crying to put yeah, on y'all social media. That's sad. Like, so I, I'm just, I'm very, 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 very extremely grateful that it came Super. later. I, I, I wouldn't so have survived high school. Like, I'm so happy. I wouldn't have survived. That um, I remember <laughs> the guy, the first guy I had sex with, I remember he told me he recorded me and I got so scared <laughs> because <laughs> I was just like, that's not funny, that's terrible. But, but I mean, it, it was a joke, but like two people were in on the joke, so they were just like encouraging. But imagine if that was like on social media. But they do that to people. I had something and, happen with a, like a cousin in high school, like recently, where like a friend got mad and posted some shit on her mother's page. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, I am so happy that none of my, like, my whole phase, my, 
my or anything. Just puberty, just in, just you in wilding general, when general. you when you are in when high I'm school, wilding the fuck out. Yeah, when you're in high school, even if you're not like physically wilding, your emotions and yeah. your hormones are wilding. Just, you hate I, the like, world. Your mama get on your and nerves. I'm, and I'm glad I didn't have a phone to where where I was just like looking in the camera crying. Yeah, <laughs> <that's> just, <laughs> I hate my, my mama. Or my Facebook <laughs> where my mama told me I couldn't go to homecoming. I'd be like, this bitch said I can't go to homecoming. Yeah. Like, can you imagine like yes, how ridiculous like, you would have been? Yes, and I'm so like I'm so grateful. Girl, like, I said, and girl, that, didn't like me either. I would have been it would have been a rap for me in high school for me sure. Too. Me too. I remember. Um, when I ditched this guy, everybody everybody loved this guy. I'm not going to say his name, but everybody loved this guy. He went to a different school than me, and we had went to a day. And my cousin actually set us up because she used to talk to his brother. And he Those was the like, best young hookup. So, and he was like, like you know, he was the coolest guy in Corpus Christi. Everybody fucking knew him. <laughs> not and the coolest. He was the coolest guy in Corpus <laughs> Christi. Everybody fucking knew who he was. And... He agreed to go with me to my dance and oh, you're my favorite dance, and you know all the girl, all the black girls were like, "He going with her? He going with her?" So at the time, I was just in love with this little Hispanic boy. I mean, I loved him. Oh, hey, I, I loved him. Like I just loved him, and um, he ended up going to the dance. And then I remember he pulled me to the side and he was just like, we rolling, what you finna do? In so many words. Oh. And I said, well, I'm rolling with <laughs> Rolling with the homies. I'm rolling with the homies. And so me and the homies, we rolled. <laughs> but I left my date there. The coolest guy in Corpus Christi. Terrible. I left, I mean, I, I was in love. I couldn't help it. I let my heart. <laughs> I let my heart. You would have been me. all over bitch, social media, bitch. When I say when, that was the Saturday night when I got to school on Monday, oh man, I was trash. <laughs> I was trash, girl, bitch. They was. I mean, they had. They talked. They talked about me like a fucking dog. I bet they talked about me like I was a fucking. Dog. Now add a thousand billion to that. And and add so like I'm like again, that's why I say like I'm so grateful. No, nah, but like my mom used to let me my mom was pretty cool. So I wanted to throw a skip party. I was, I was like kind of straight skip up about party. it. Party. And then, yeah, it was my senior year. I'm like, well, can I have a skip party here? And she was like, Yeah, just make sure the house is clean and everybody's out before I get home. So I ordered pizza and I had like a full skip party. And now because of IG and Facebook and Twitter and videos and all that. I can imagine niggas walking around my house like recording Everything, our home. Yeah. And like, cause my mom, we had in our butler's pantry, pantry we had liquor and I, I wasn't drinking then. So like they bust open the Hennessy and was drinking the Hennessy, but I didn't know they were drinking the Hennessy because I had never smelled like my mom didn't yeah. drink like that. So yeah. I didn't know what it smelled like. Yeah. So I remember like something smelled funny. Come to find out, they was drinking Hennessy and Cokes the whole time. But I can imagine now just how young boys are and you young niggas, how y'all would have been all on like yeah. IG, IG Live. live. Like, hey, yeah. Hennessy, yeah. Hennessy. We're yeah. having these yeah. like, Y'all would have been like my home, like where we sleep at, like setting us up for a robbery or some shit. So, I mean, and I threw that. I threw like three or four parties at my house. And I could just imagine that. Well, three, well, two and then one at the clubhouse. But I can imagine now people recording being in your house and just, it would have been a mess. I would, a mess. It would have been a complete and a utter mess. mess. It's underage drinking. Underage you drinking. Cops watching. You got cops or people at this point because social media is open to everybody. Imagine going on live and your parents see you in somebody's house with Hennessy. It's like, what type of mother is that? When really my mom, I mean, I guess I could see why they would say that. <laughs> but with that being said, it's like, okay, y'all 17, 18, just, yeah. you know, don't burn my house down. And, you know. It's wild. So they would have been like, wild. what parent will let just a bunch of high schoolers this in the house? Is wow. Like, I just. I'm so thankful. Just, yeah. I'm would you sick. let your kids get on social media? No. What age, though? I, I would wait till, I mean, I wouldn't, if I were to have a kid right now, I would not allow them to be, like, because it's so fucking negative. But like, you, do you realize now, okay, so you don't have kids, so let's say in, like, the next then, two or three years you get yeah, pregnant. It's like Imagine super, how fast yeah, it's, it's going like to go. Super, but I think what I would do is I would really in, 
instill in my kids, like, that's not real. None of that is real. Like, social media is such a an illusion. It because is. I know people for a fact that are, like, on Instagram, that they're, what they're portraying and, and putting out there into the world is really a, not, a life that they're not living. That's 90% of social media, though. And... I would really inst- and I think that because the parents are older and they don't know mm-hmm. like they don't know that yeah. well, I think it's oh. important I think it's important and I think that's probably why a lot of people are so misguided is because they think that this is really reality but really this is not fucking reality like I just don't believe that these people are living these like y'all that? are not in like have these people that say that they do this 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 and that like real niggas ain't fucking posting that shit real niggas that got it where's bill gates instagram where's warren buffett's instagram you just where's want people like or just or you just want people you want people to think you got it like that like you got yeah. i follow a couple of people and i'm pretty sure i'm about to see a whole bunch of super bowl posts and yeah. all the super bowl posts I'm see it's only one person I know who's really living that life because I know them yeah. and I know they really really yeah. really live that at life at the end of the day like I would definitely teach my kids like that shit doesn't even fucking matter what matters is reality and what reality that you live in and that's not reality that is true I like, always I'm curious now I need to go look at somebody's like college um, not criteria what is for the classes, college courses? Mm-hmm. Because I'm very interested to see are they now are they now offering? Because they thought social media was going to be they thought the internet was going to be a fleeting thing. Right. They definitely thought social media was going to be a fleeting thing. Right. So I'm very curious to see are they offering degrees in like social media content and social social media management? I'm sure. I mean, they've got jobs for it now. Yeah, they have a shit. Uh, I was just online. They got a shitload of jobs for social media but, you know, content it's just, and management. It's 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 to a point to where it's like. It's so polluted and it's so polluted with such, it's just fake. It is, but you have to find a right combination of people and that's on the person itself. Right. Like when I went and cleaned up my Twitter and I cleaned up my IG, yeah. I went and found people of substance yeah. and people I genuinely Absolutely. wanted to follow. And not that I don't go search random hood rat pages to go look. And just you know to be what? Nosy. Sometimes I do that. And then like I went, okay, so this one night I, um, I went on this girl's page and I love how like hood, hood, people they love to have their shit private like <laughs> this is so funny so i have to get mad when y'all pay to be private but you know this one girl i mean sometimes i just don't understand the the the, the ignorance it's like sometimes people just they they want to be ignorant for the sake of being ignorant mm-hmm. because they think it's entertaining but it's really just like oh my god you really just are ig- like oh and you have a kid oh, oh my yeah. god but every <laughs> that because everybody want to go viral yes and and that's what it seems to me on this particular person's page like you know she's just i mean like one nail is broken and one nail is like i mean it's and the way she was talking and then she had the bonnet on and then <laughs> not the bonnet then, <laughs> yeah. something about that and damn bonnet does it she every had time a, she had a bonnet on and then she was at the mcdonald's drive through and she's like Talking about how you how you have to sh- brush the haters off. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, give a word. <laughs> give a word before you get that dollar burger and that dollar iced tea. And then, you know, her son's in the back without a car seat. Mm-hmm. He's clearly needs a car seat. <laughs> <laughs> he clearly <laughs> needs He's a car seat. He's in the back seat with no car seat, no seat belt. He's boosies in the background. Like, I mean, it's just like, oh my God. But... I I watch it only. I guess I just watch it to appreciate. Like, damn. No, yeah, because people want to go viral. I think the smart people are people who gather a following and can make money off their bullshit. Because a lot of y'all be doing that shit just for the hell of it, and it's and for no reason. And, and, and it's a lot of people making a lot of money on social media. Yeah. Like that. What is that? I can't think of his name, but they just kicked his ass off YouTube because he went into that suicide jungle in Japan and showed somebody he had hung himself. Um, the white boy? He's white, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he made like 15, 16 million last year. Off, and then that's what they said when they kicked him off Facebook. 
they said, uh, I mean, when they kicked him off YouTube, somebody made the comment like he's going to go broke. But then they actually broke down his finances. He only made like two point two million from YouTube. So that other 15 million came from just sponsors, uh, sponsors mm-hmm. and just other ran- I'm pretty sure you probably would lose those sponsors ev- eventually because he was just on Good Morning America talking to Michael Strahan. Damn it. What's his name? I don't know. Sam, but I know talking, talking, talking to Michael Strahan, trying to basically um, get back in the graces of the internet, but he made like 14, 15 million. They made it clear. He he cleaned up. That's so crazy. social media is why everybody thought it was fleeting. I do think it, it it's social media is here to stay forever. It's going to be something new. It's been a minute since, I mean, Snapchat was like the newest thing they brought. So it's going to be something after Snapchat that's about to come I up hope eventually. Not. Like, good Lord. What, no, but it's like, going to be what, something. I mean, like what else could, like what, fucking else can we see it'll be a variation of something because really everything's a variation of my my space but a variation of facebook so they took your statuses and made twitter because that's all twitter is I love twitter. is a bunch of tw- is a bunch of statuses and then they took who's the, your favorite person to follow on twitter um i got top five i okay. follow call me dollar mm-hmm. um call me dollar talks about r&b music mm-hmm. and like just R&B culture in general every morning it's like a random song and then I don't know he just, he really loves R&B but then he's mm-hmm. just funny as hell mm-hmm. when he recaps like just stuff mm-hmm. so I follow him I follow uh, Look at Destin he's from the podcast uh, The Friend Zone I've been following him for a while that nigga is funny too and he's like super cute he's just he's a good time yeah I follow It's Carrie and mm-hmm. I think he lives actually in Houston really his ass Everything is like she's snatching my wig. My nah, wig. I love it. I my love wig. It. I love He's it. He's funny. I do kid theory and uh, who else? I can't think of this one girl. I think it's like a race. What is her? I don't know her actual handle. Kiki, I think her handle is. Mm-hmm. She's like, I met her randomly, I guess, because we all followed the same people. Mm-hmm. And like, and that was the odd thing. Like, I made a comment on something or she yeah. made a comment. And then we became like friends. Like, Twitter friends. like, we're Twitter friends to the yeah. point where it's like, girl, such and such show yeah. coming back. We watching yeah. it. It's like, yeah, yeah girl. Yes, I'm about to. Girl, you seen the episode? Like, yeah. full throttle of conversations yeah. with like a stranger. I love it. Yeah. So. Let's see. Uh, so, I followed this one girl. I mean, I... Yeah, this one girl, her name is Brie, and what is her Twitter handle? Her name is Brie, big shit talker, and she she's obsessed with Drake, <laughs> 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 and she comments on everything, everything love happening I in, love in life, she comments on it, I and love then it. my favorite phrase that she says, like, so Justin Timberlake came out with his album, right? And so everybody was trashing it. So then, like, he had put, go download my album on iTunes. And so her phrase is, when shit is trash, she puts, I'm going to keep it real with you, chief. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, and I, I love it. I doubt we I fucking do that. Right? <laughs> Somebody, like, somebody. And then she'd be like, Oh, that song? Oh, that's a bop. <laughs> no, the guy I follow called me Dollar. They put, he retweeted Jaquees, and Jaquees was like, new music coming. He was like, you can keep it. It's like, why would you, why would you say that? Petty Crocker? That's another oh, one. Oh, I follow Petty Crocker. Petty Crocker. Shout out to Petty Crocker because he started following me. But he retweets a lot of Mariah Carey fans. Oh, and I do I not. love it. And he I just, told Mariah, I think me and him got together on Janet. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah, he's been reposting a lot of Janet Yeah, me and him got together on Janet. But yeah, Petty Crocker is one of my favorites yeah, because good. he has a lot of, like, the Mariah Carey people that just stand for her are fucking hilarious. And he oh. retweets the most stand hilarious Stand culture. Shit. Stand Let, culture let's talk is about, hysterical. Okay, y'all, let me tell y'all something about stand culture for you niggas who weren't around when, Stan, when the original stand was out. The original stand is from Eminem's song called Stan. This nigga was a psychopath and basically did a murder suicide between him and his girlfriend being a super fan for Eminem. Mm-hmm. So the word Stan is not a goddamn compliment. FYI. But okay, girl. Because he literally did like, did I think he put her, he didn't, oh, well, he eventually killed her because I think he threw her in the trunk and then he drove mm-hmm. it into like a river mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. So the word Stan, y'all need to watch that video. Y'all probably wouldn't be saying Stan so proudly. But the, I love, um, I love Petty Crocker. I love the motivational quotes. Um, what else? 
Who else? Who else? Who else? I'm trying to find. Uh, Krizzle from King Krizzle. From um, the read, oh, Crystal, Crystal, yeah, Crystal. I follow her too. Yes, I like I like her tweets, and then I like Issa Rae. She I like Issa Rae. She doesn't tweet she a lot. She doesn't tweet a lot, but when she does tweet, I relate to him so much. But I'm starting to really get back into that Twitter. But I just think the commentary on Twitter, especially when it comes to like these shows or new music, like when um, it's perfect. It's just so fucking it's just, funny. It's just funny people in the world. Black people are funny. It's I so mean, nothing. I don't know, but I mean, I follow white people on Twitter, but I'm black like, Black Twitter, keep it real with you. I fucking but love black 99 Twitter. 99% of my Twitter is black people, and y'all I are funny. I love black Twitter. Y'all are creative. Black Twitter is, a, like, imagine. Y'all see. If, <laughs> y'all see everything. Like, it'll be like a TV show, and they'll notice something at the bottom of the screen. It's like, how did you even notice that? Like, black I was watching Twitter the show is you. hysterical. Like, but the only thing that makes me sad, because I really like, because I follow so many creatives mm-hmm. on Twitter, people who have, like, podcasts mm-hmm. or radio shows or whatever, doing their little, you know, short clips or whatever. Yeah. The saddest part about Black Twitter is that these companies like BuzzFeed and all these other like they big steal. websites, they put all of them on notifications and just use their material to come Pre-pre-pre up with their content. content. Mm-hmm. And that's really sad. I wish there was a way that all these creative people and kids could get their just due because y'all are literally creating your entire content off, off of Black, Black Twitter. Twitter. Literally. Mm-hmm. And that's just unfortunate. Like, I... Like y'all, instead it. of hiring them, y'all yeah, just hire you know white, white, white people to, to do, watch to their watch black Twitter. Yeah, watch their so black. Page. There was a hashtag. Uh, tweet like the tweet. The tweet like the sixteen hundred took me down. <laughs> And so they kept saying, and no white people better be in here. I did, I did. I do randomly. Oh, you know what? And shout out to you, you white supremacists. Um, the first day of um what it was the first day of Black History Month, I tweeted my all-time favorite Black History oh, video. About Whitney and Bobby. About Whitney and Bobby saying we need a whole year. And then Whitney does like this weird smile. And it was the night of like, I think Bobby Brown's birthday and MTV was interviewing them. Legendary piece. So I put this up and then I put hashtag Black History Month. When I say all you white supremacists flooded my shit. Really? You can fucking kick rocks. I don't give a shit what y'all think about Black History Month. It's a month. Get over it. Yes. They flood, but they not only flooded and then just kept like questioning Black History Month. They were like, I got into it with one man because he was like, I can't believe you're um you're posting this crackhead and this dad beat dad. So he had Elvis as his profile picture. And I was like, FYI, Elvis also died of an overdose. But y'all just like to call it a heart attack. So then he got upset with me because I had to (laughs) let him know that. Because And that's the true story. Elvis died with just as much drugs as Whitney Houston. Both of them technically died of a heart attack. Both of them both had drugs in their system. Both of them niggas died in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Bitch, Elvis was a crackhead. And they sealed his goddamn records. But y'all don't want to talk about that. Y'all want to keep, y'all like to keep y'all white kings and queens on a pedestal. But what you won't do is come in my bitches about um that legendary Whitney Houston. Not nippy. Not nippy. Not my nippy, Janet Jackson, Tony Braxton. It's a it's a list of celebrities <laughs> I go in for online. <laughs> and nippy's on that list in the top. <laughs> nippy. But now the white people's I but I always have like random people in my comment section. I had like some Kappas in my comment section before. Um, Peter's been in my comment sections multiple times, usually mm-hmm. around the holidays. Um, um, I just retweet. I don't really yeah. tweet. Stuff. Yeah, no. Well, I I like to retweet things. Well, so I not Peter retweet. came into my mentions because on Thanksgiving they showed this video of the turkey on the table, but then they did it in reverse. So then you had to watch the turkey be born and get slaughtered. So I retweeted Peter because I just, I just think at this point. I think you force, because I don't follow y'all. So you sponsoring, you know, your tweet so I can see it. I feel like that was disrespectful. Because I don't talk about you not wanting to eat meat. So you're not going to talk about me wanting to eat meat. So I politely retweeted PETA and was like, I don't give a shit how I got there as long as it's Cajun. Why did I say that? (laughs) PETA? No, for real. No, dead ass. Peter was in my mentions for like two months. Like they just got out my mentions like yesterday. <laughs> like, and I'm scared to bring it up because I hope nobody from Peter listens and like goes back into my mentions. So I might not be able to do my handle later. No, it was like two months. I had Scientologists in my mentions once because what's the girl? Leah Renna? Remini. Remini. She talked about 
uh, Jada being yeah. in sci- Scientology. So I commented on the article, was like, listen, I know you got a problem with it, and that's fine, but don't be throwing everybody else under the goddamn bus. Like, oh, do with your shit. Like, you making money. You're making good money off trying to expose them. This is somewhat of this is a business for you. Why did I say? I didn't even know Scientologists had the internet. I thought I don't know. I thought it was more culty than that. <laughs> them niggas was in my mentions for like a full two weeks. I had caps. I think I made a comment about this cap in college. I dated how he had a little dick. And after that, oh my god! Tonight I had like some people. I had some baby mamas in my mentions tonight. I mean, it, it got a little personal. I was watching the show. And the baby daddy, I was watching Love After Lockdown. Love After Lockdown. Yeah. So the guy basically. I want to go to your. <laughs> no, I've been getting cussed out a lot. So <laughs> I have to block people. So the guy was like. Hysterical. The guy was like. The guy had a girlfriend. He was in jail. He's out of jail now. He hadn't seen his kid, who's now an adult. And tw- he had like 20 years of some shit. So the girl, <laughs> even though the girl was like 24, she brought her mama. So the girlfriend was like, why the baby mama got to come? So she was like, um, I don't feel well. I'm leaving or whatever. So she leaves. So the baby mama comes and the guy's like, you know, chatting it up. And then she's like, well, where your, where your girlfriend at? Like, you know, like baby mamas do. And she was like, he was like, um, oh, <laughs> so man, she jealous of you because this my family. And she jealous of you. And he kept like telling this story about how she's so jealous and you my family and I love y'all. But she jealous and she can't separate family. And so I made a comment i was like why do baby daddies do that like why do they always start drama between a girlfriend and the baby mama he could have easily said she was sick oh baby mama coalition came searching for my black ass <laughs> he's telling the truth he's telling the truth like with the claps and everything and i can't stand females who be hating on the baby mamas everybody hate on baby mamas and then so i started I let like five of them go because you know i understand maybe it was a sensitive subject i didn't mean to be harmful or disrespectful but that nigga was starting the drama. Like, he right. really could have just said, you know, she was yeah. busy. So, after, like, okay, I'm lying. After, like, the second comment, I started, like, responding. But I would just respond with, oh, you a baby mama, huh? Question mark. Oh, you a baby mama, huh? You a baby mama, huh? I am a baby mama, and I'm happy to be <laughs> <laughs> So, I got cussed out for, like, a whole hour by, like, baby mamas. Because apparently they don't be having a problem. Oh, it's shit. always the next bit. So, Again, that's why I love Twitter. Yeah, because so, they'll find you in a heartbeat. They will find you. They will talk about your ass. I'm talking, and I'm really sorry. Peter had me for like two, two and a half months. <laughs> I would never forget that shit. It got to a point where I, I think I tweeted Peter and apologized. I'm like, can you please, can you please? <laughs> I can't, I can't send it to Twitter to like 500 notifications. That basically like, fuck you, die. And I hope you die like the turkey died. It's like, oh my God. Can y'all not? Like, and I hope you, you have blood clots and all the oh meat stops your heart. Oh like, my God. Bitch, I'm a turkey, bitch. But oh Peter do that shit every year. Like, I'm going to leave them alone and shit because they just got a lot of bitches. But around Super Bowl, they do some slick shit about buffalo wings. And every oh, year, yeah. I get their ass together. But since they just got out my mentions, You're I'm just, um, you, you I don't want no Because I don't even hash the past two months. But y'all, <laughs> that is y'all do be tweeting that cauliflower trying to convince me it tastes like buffalo wings. And every year, I got to get y'all bitch asses together. Or they be like two Girl, look. million wings Peter, I'm I'm trying to go vegan. Don't get in my mentions. No. Okay? Shit. Say she something. said that, not me. I said I I said what I said. I said what I said. I don't really care how it got there. And I said how I said. Now, with that being said, I do apologize and please don't come looking for me again. <laughs> no, it was like two and a half months. Like it had got to a point where I was just like, damn, how do I get them to stop commenting? That's hysterical. And then like the Scientology one, they had stopped, but then somebody popular retweeted it, so it like reignited the Scientology <laughs> people. And I'm just like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> All it takes is one retweet and your ass is back down the tub. I was like, oh, <laughs> my shit's in shambles all over again. That's hysterical. Oh, I can't. I just, Social media. I just, gotta love it. Got to. But I guess we're done here to get on social media because I am going to check my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find me at... If, if you're tweeting me about PETA stuff, please don't find me. But if it's not about PETA stuff or Scientology stuff or Kappa stuff <laughs> or, or Baby, Baby Mama. Mama stuff, you can find me on all social media at Natalia Ebony. And I am... <coughs> sorry. I am Miss Cool in the City. Miss Cool 
underscore the letter N, the city. And it's Recovering Party Girls on Facebook and Twitter and at, I did it wrong. Party Girls Pod. It's Party Girls Pod on Twitter. It's Recovering Party Girls on Facebook and Instagram. And anything else? Be easy, guys. Be easy. Please don't comment if you're from Peter. I'm really sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 